you know, we ought to try to put this beyond politics and think about these kids' lives. I mean, you know, we can all talk about sympathy and we can talk about mental health, although the mental health of Americans is no worse than that of our <clears throat> other major countries. But this is an opportunity for us to do something responsible and to do it together. And, and what do you say to people who might argue, um, you know, with all due respect, President Clinton, uh, Democrats uh, supported the Brady Bill. You had control, Democrats had control of the House and the Senate in, in 1992 through 94. And then you lost control of it because, at least in part, because of your support for gun control. Uh, the argument being, you know, the voters don't want it, even though obviously polling contradicts it. But the, the, the people who vote don't want it, maybe. What, what would your argument be to somebody? Obviously, th there have been years where Democrats have been completely AWOL on this issue. There have been, and that's what happened in 94. And what happened in 94 was that our people didn't understand, I think, and I didn't understand fully, that a poll is meaningless on this because intensity governs it. And intensity tells you whether it's a voting issue. So basically, a lot of these things, the, Brady, the background check law had 70, 30 or more for it. But of the 30 who were against it, 20-something percent would vote against you if you disagreed with them. And of the 70 who were for it, only 10 percent or so would vote right. for you if you agreed with them or would vote against you if you disagreed with them. But that's all changed now, uh, beginning with this last spate of shootings of kids in schools and owing, I think, to the passion and determination of the kids at Parkland in Florida and the allies they made in Chicago, New York, and other places around the country. It is a voting issue now for our side. If you look at these recent elections in swing districts in Virginia, we just had an election there where gun safety was an issue. It worked for us, not against us. And there are now a lot of Republicans who represent districts with a substantial suburban population. And I think they understand that a lot of their supporters believe strongly that it's time to update this background check law and make it truly comprehensive. Yeah. And the support for that is around 90%. We've, it's not going to beat anybody. And we've heard President Trump say a couple times after a couple horrific shootings, I think Parkland in, 19, in 2018, and then I think this year after Dayton and El Paso, we've heard President Trump talk about doing something on background checks, expanding the background checks to cover all uh, gun sales. Um, obviously, the NRA is against it. I want you to take a listen to Attorney General Bill Barr yesterday talking about why the efforts to introduce some uh, reforms on, on gun legislation have stalled. Take a listen. Uh, unfortunately, our discussions on the legislative aspects of this have been sidetracked because of the uh, impeachment uh, process on the Hill. Now, there is nobody in the world who is more of an expert on the need and uh, ability to work with Congress at the same time that they're impeaching you. And I'm wondering is, what is your reaction to Barr saying, well, the House Democrats decided to impeach, therefore we can't do anything on guns? Well, my, my answer is, look at how much we got done in 1998 and 1999. And uh, even in 97, we had very productive actions in all three years. The only the really tough year we had after the Republicans won that Congress was 95 to the beginning of 96 when they shut the government down twice. But once the public rendered judgment on what they thought should be done, I just kept working with them. I mean, it, that's just an excuse. So what would your message to President doing? Trump be? What would your message to President Trump be about and when he says, well, I can't work with these people, they're impeaching me? My message was, would be, look, you got hired to do a job. There's, uh, there's, you don't get the days back you blow off. Every day is an opportunity to make something good happen. And I would 
say I've got lawyers and staff people handling this impeachment inquiry, and they should just have at it. Meanwhile, I'm going to work for the American people. That's what I would do. I mean, I think what happens is he did in, indicate a couple of times he might go along with this, and then obviously the gun lobby got a hold of him and pulled him back. But at some point, you know, denial is no longer an option. And we, we the Congress is basically in denial of the consequences of doing nothing, or at least the people who were opposed to it. And the easiest thing to do is they don't want to pass the assault weapons ban and the ammunition clip limit, which I strongly believe they should. If you just look at the staggering increase in mass shooting since the assault weapons ban expired, if they don't want to do that, at least give us a clean background check law, one that works in the modern world, takes advantage of our information technology, and basically doesn't bend over backwards to make it easy for, for people who have no business getting these guns to get them. And lastly, sir, um, we haven't heard from uh, the current president after this school shooting. Um, these school shootings happen, it feels at least, more often than they did uh, in the 90s. And I'm wondering for any American parent out there or child who is today scared what your message to them would be. My message is, first of all, your schools should do everything they possibly can to minimize this. But they did gun safety drills in the schools where the shooting occurred. And that you deserve an environment which minimizes your risk. We can minimize your risk without doing anything to the right to have an arm for hunting, sports shooting, or self-protection. Nothing, zero, nada. It doesn't affect that at all. To have a good, comprehensive background check law. And from my point of view, it does nothing to it to ban military style assault weapons and ammunition clips over a certain size. When we did it, no one missed any time hunting or sports shooting, and no one complained that they couldn't really protect their homes if they didn't have, you know, an assault weapon. But if you continue to pretend that you can deal with all this by violations of existing law without trying to prevent it, you're going to continue to have these things happen. And we don't know what the facts are here now. I don't know right. what kind of weapons this young man used. I don't know uh, what went on there. But I do know this. In most of these cases, if we had an aggressive preventive program that doesn't interfere with the Second Amendment rights the Supreme Court has specified, we could have prevented or minimized the damage. I remember at one point in the 90s when I was president, a study came out saying that if you got shot with an assault weapon, you were three times as likely to die from the wound that if you just got one bullet in you from a revolver or from another kind of handgun. So we just need to calm down and take this out of politics and give more of our kids a better future. I mean, it's just, this is, it doesn't make any sense. And, and it's, the political argument that you raised in the beginning is absolutely right. There were people who lost their careers in Congress because of that. And one reason we lost the majority in Congress in 94 was because of that. But it's not that way anymore. It's now a voting issue for the people that agree with us. So if you're just worried about the naked politics, it's at least a wash. And people should instead do what's right for the children. Former President Bill Clinton, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate your calling in, and, and congratulations on your award. Thank you, Jake.